I recently broke a 50 year old strikeout record by recording 19 Ks in a single game. I'm gonna break down everything I was thinking on each pitch of this historic game. Now it might seem like this was easy, but I had to overcome a lot of obstacles to do it. The game was delayed due to rain. It rained during the game. I was facing one of the best lineups in the league with multiple all-stars. The owner of my team specifically requested to watch me pitch this game and my bullpen was completely worn out, so I didn't have any backup if I performed poorly. Now warming up before the game, I felt great, but when I got to the bullpen mound, it was completely soaked. My cleats were covered in mud, and I ended up throwing half my pregame bullpen from flat ground. The mound soaked, I can't, I, every time I land, I slip. Now before the game, my teammates didn't even think we were gonna play due to the rain. And usually when a team thinks like that, they don't perform too well, so I knew I was gonna have to be really good for us to have a chance of winning this game. Here we go. That's on phone. Do it yep. with me. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's f him up. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. They don't have a spike cleaner out here. It's kind of brutal. I had my good stuff in the pen. Let's see if it followed me to the game or not. Okay, one pitch into the game and we're not off to a hot start. Now, I do try to hit the middle of the zone every first pitch just to force the action, and I get a read on the hitters and the opposing team's approach. Generally speaking, teams don't swing first pitch of the game, but these guys came to hack today, and I realized that right off the bat. So next up was Alexi Marista, former big leaguer, the guy that hit this homer off me, and one of their many all-stars. Well, they're coming to swing, so good to know. All right, Alexi, here we go. Coming to swing, that's for sure. Catch it, catch it, catch it. Okay, good. We're and the reason I started Alexi off with a cutter is because I knew they were coming out to swing. So I got him to pop it up, and we got our first out of the game. There's no way you swing first pitch, right? So next up was Ronaldo Rodriguez, and I didn't think he was going to be swinging first pitch of the game because the prior two guys had done that. So generally speaking, if guys before you swing first pitch, you're expected to take a couple pitches, especially early in the game, to try to drive the pitcher's pitch count up. That is a strike. Thank you. Late, late, late. So after the first pitch cutter at the top of the zone where I got a trigger and a strike, and then the fastball up and in after that, I could already read that he was late on the fastball timing, so I decided to stick with that fastball up and in until he sped up. I think you're late enough that I'm going right back in there. Late, late, late. We got a velo 93. Yeah, I think the right pitch here is curveball. Maybe that was not the right pitch. Kind of smoked that. Is he looking off speed? Yeah, that was definitely not the right pitch. He was late triggering on the 0-1 fastball. He was late triggering and swinging at the 1-1 fastball. The right pitch is just to throw another fastball up and in, but I missed that in the game. Fortunately for me, he didn't hit that ball out because he did crush it and just drifted a little bit foul. So dodged a bullet there. You can gas him up in. There it is. Slider down. So Rodriguez struggles with sliders. I was second guessing myself a little bit here. After the high fastballs, I was going to throw the curveball in the dirt, but I should have just gone right to the slider because I know that he struggles with it. Should have just gone right to that, but we good. Next up is Kyle Martin, one of their all-stars. And at the all-star game, he hit one of the furthest homers I've ever seen hit. So he's got a lot of juice. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, Kyle, you hit balls in the zone, breaking balls in the zone. So I'm going to get you with heaters in the zone up. Give me that pitch. It's a little off, but I want it. Now in the game, live, I thought that was a little bit off the plate, but in the TV zone, it is touching the edge of the zone, so I could have easily gotten that strike call. But regardless, he struggles on fastballs up and in, and I throw fastballs up and into lefties very well, so I'm going to stick with it. By you. You were nowhere close to that. I'm just going to live in there. This at bat is how many times can I hit that spot? Well, I'm two for three. Well, we wanted to. Doors! Three for five and a punchy. You can't get to that pitch, Kyle. Yeah, good call, good call. What's the fastball vert? A couple of 18, so 15 to 18. Yeah. Okay. So fastball vertical movement is important to know. I know my velocity, I can see it in the game on the scoreboard. However, I can't see how the pitch is moving. At Mexico City, we're at 7,500 feet of elevation. So my fastball vertical movement is usually like 
13 to 15, something like that. At sea level, my fastball vertical movement is usually like 17 to 20, and that makes a large difference. Basically, when a fastball is coming in, if it has more vertical movement, it fights gravity better, so it stays up. So when the hitter's swing is trying to hit this ball, the fastball ends up above their swing. However, at elevation, if that ball's dying and not staying up as much, now the hitter's swing just contacts it and the fastballs get hit a lot more. So I like to check my numbers after the first inning to know what kind of fastball profile I'm playing with so that I know, okay, if you're at 20 vert, you can go to fastballs more often. If you're at 14, you gotta mix and match and be a lot finer with the fastball. So this is just important information for me to know as I'm trying to turn the lineup over and navigate my way through the game. Mound's really nice. Nice slope to it, grabs well. My command's really good tonight. Stuff is sharp, so should be a good one. Yeah, so after the first inning, I knew it was gonna be a good one. I did not know it was gonna be this good, but I felt pretty good. SB, do we have the cleat cleaning tool? Because they don't have a they don't have a scraper on the mound. Yeah, I told him to prepare a one for you. I was just take that out with you when you do a sword. Yeah, I'll keep it in the back pocket. Every time I get a sword, I just reach in. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of joking about that, but it does come into play later in the game, as you'll see. So I'm glad I took it out to the mound. The first hitter in the second inning is Gabrielino. Let's see what he's got for us. <laughs> Thank you for swinging at that. So after that one swing, I could tell that he does not like cutters or sliders away, so we're just gonna go right back to it. That delivery felt terrible, but yeah, after that swing. Right on it, dude. We just go right back to that, I think. Okay. Do I just get it closer or do I freeze down away? Yeah, we'll go slider again. So there I'm thinking, okay, I have two options. I can just get the slider a little bit closer to the zone because he's already swung it too out of the zone and looked terrible on him. Or I can freeze with the fastball down and away using that slider tunnel that I just missed with. Ultimately, I decided to go back to the slider here because it's a one-two count. And also he'd looked so bad on the sliders before that there wasn't really much danger of him hitting this pitch as long as I threw a decent one. See ya, bitch. Another guy that we challenge with heaters up and in here. Also doesn't like quick pitch, so we'll go with that first pitch. So going into the game, I didn't have much of a scouting report on these guys, but I had pitched against them once before, and so I'm remembering my bats against them from the prior time. So as a pitcher, it's important to have good memory recall, but it's also important to have a nice short-term memory when you have a bad outing. So kind of a double-edged sword there. Oh, gosh. Oh boy, let us stay on it. Very nice. That's big for the program. Lots of righties tonight. This is great. Dude, they got some new guys in their lineup. I don't know these fools. Five pitches you should be taking. So after two outs on five pitches, I figured the third hitter of the inning would have to take the first pitch, but I went with the quick pitch just in case. Now, my thought here is show him the quick pitch, steal the strike, and then he doesn't have the timing of my delivery. So he doesn't get the benefit of taking the first pitch, but I still get the benefit of being ahead in the count. <laughs> I got that thing a strike. And it definitely looks like a strike on the TV strike zone. Now, maybe the TV strike zone is a little bit too tall for this and it's a ball, but that definitely was a strike in my opinion. So after the first pitch, quick pitch, ball, I decided to go with a second pitch fastball up and in and do it out of a slide step to continue mixing up the timing so he couldn't get a read on my delivery. And I didn't get the pitch all the way up and in where I wanted it, but in a 1-0 count, I'm just trying to hit the zone to get back in the count here. So perfect pitch in my book. Late to trigger. Cutter. So continuing the theme of the timing disruptions in this at bat, I went with the pause leg kick on the third pitch cutter. Do my normal leg lift, pause at the bottom, and then do a slide step and throw a cutter. So I'm just really messing with this timing here, hoping that that's helping me out. Right on it. And it's hard to tell if it is or not, because he was nowhere close to that cutter, but at the same time, the cutter was really well placed, so I'm having a difficult time to tell if it's working or not, but I'm in a good spot in this at bat. Yes, sword! Ah! So after the swing through on the 1-2 cutter, I decided to go with the bigger slider, start it in the same tunnel, break it down and out of the zone, and I get my fourth strikeout and a sword. That's one, two, three, four strikeouts with a sword. And if you want to commemorate this special game, you can go to trevorbauer.com, scan the QR code, or click the link in the description and get the shirt I'm wearing right now, commemorating all of my Ks. We also have a bunch of other new Diablos and Bauer Outage crossover merch available at trevorbauer.com. So go check it out. Don't miss out on the fresh merch.
Also, while you're there, the Sword logo tee and the Balrogs logo tee now come in a whole bunch of new colors to better fit your wardrobe, so be sure to pick one of those up as well. We're offering free shipping on orders over $75 in the US, so don't miss out. Scan the QR code, click the link in the description, or go to trevorbauer.com to get yours today. Spit at me all you want, bitch, but that was an ugly at bat. Yep, yep, yep. Uh-huh, uh-huh. didn't bring out the It was already on the back of the mound. I gotta remember that, that'd be hilarious though. And the cutter's like really biting tonight, huh? It's like, woo, yeah. So as you can see from my conversation with my catcher right here, I can tell that my stuff is moving very well after the second inning. Now, we're in Oaxaca, which is at 5,500 feet elevation, which is basically the exact same as Colorado. But because it's been raining and there's a lot of moisture in the air, the ball's actually biting a little bit sharper than it would at elevation if it was dry. So that's helping me out a little bit, but if this was at sea level, I can't even imagine how much the ball would have been moving. Oh, we got a lefty finally. Definitely got a mix and a split this a bat. See where we're at there. That better be a strike. So first pitch of the third inning is a cutter. And if you look at where my catcher's setting up, his glove is directly in the middle of the strike zone, which is perfect. And look where this cutter actually ends up. I hit my target pretty close, but it still ends up on the edge of the strike zone. If the glove was set up on the edge in the first place, I probably would be behind 1-0 in this count. So now we're 0-1, and at this point in the game, I've thrown a curveball, a slider, a cutter, and a four seam, but I've yet to throw a splitter. So I wanted to mix a splitter into this lefty to see how good it was this game and see if it's a pitch that I could go to, maybe even potentially to some of the righties as I got deeper into the game. Again, I'm realizing that I have to go long in this game because I don't have a bullpen backing me up because the guys are so tired. So I'm trying to make sure that I have all my weapons so the third and the fourth time through, I can present a different approach to the hitters, and having my split working is a big part of that. Ah. That ball slipped out of my hand. I think we just go there again and throw a better one because this one won't slip out of my hand. Down below the zone. Ah, good pitch. I like that. Now we go fastball down away for the freeze. So here's my thought on the freeze fastball down and away in this 1-2 count. On the 0-2 count, I throw a splitter in the dirt. So that pitch had to start at the bottom of the zone and break into the dirt. I did not get a swing out of it. So I'm going to use that same tunnel throw something that looks just like the split, but sticks in the bottom part of the zone. Also, he's seen a mid-speed pitch with the cutter, and then two mid-speed pitches with the splitters. Those have opposite movements to him, but he's yet to see a fastball that's a bat. So I have a lot of protection on this down and away. One, he might freeze on it because of the tunnel. Two, he might be late on it because he's seen slower pitches, and this is going to surprise him. So this is really a very little risk pitch here. If I just get it close, I probably have an out. Ah, yep. Bye, bitch. Perfect off that splitter tunnel. That was a beautiful thing. So I hit the tunnel perfectly. He did swing, which I wasn't expecting. I thought he might freeze, but this is what I was talking about with the protection. And look at this tunnel between the splitter that he saw 0-2 and the fastball that he saw 1-2. Really hard to tell those pitches apart. Got another righty. You should be taking. We'll go fastball away. No. Thank you. So here I use the quick pitch to steal another strike. I'm set on the mound, as you can see, and he's still waving his bat. So as soon as I saw him wag his bat towards me, I started my delivery and stole a strike. You gotta be ready when you step in the box, my dude. Now we go cutter. Okay, go right back to that. So I missed with the 0-1 cutter, I decided to go right back to it 1-1 because he's yet to swing. And if he's going to swing at this pitch, he's probably gonna be looking for a fastball. I do wanna make sure and hit the zone here though. Yep. Splitter or slider? Oh, no. yeah. Now, the reason I thought splitter or slider is this. One, I have the first pitch fastball down that I could throw the splitter that looks like it and break it into the dirt. Two, I just threw the cutter that was kind of in the middle of the zone, so it started at the top and ended up as a strike. So if I start a slider in the same spot, it's going to break down more and off the plate more and end up as a ball, but I might get a swing out of that tunnel. So I have two tunnels that I can use here. I ended up going with the slider because it was a little bit slower. If I miss with the split, he's kind of in the middle speed after seeing a fastball and two cutters. He started high and I've worked him down to the middle speed. So if I miss with the split, there's not as much protection on that pitch as there is on the slider. Expelliarmus! Expelliarmus! <laughs> Get my little wand out here. Yes, 
Expelliarmus, my favorite strikeout celebration of the night. It's from Harry Potter where you cast the Expelliarmus spell and the other person's wand goes flying. It's also denoted here on the t-shirt with a nice little magic wand K. Good thing I had that cleat pick made so I could use it as my little magic wand. And with that, we're back to the top of the order and former big leaguer, Jonathan Daza. Now, if you remember, he swung first pitch of the game on a fastball middle middle and hit a double. So we're gonna start him off with something other than that. Okay, you swung first pitch fastball, so yeah. Strike. First pitch cutter away, get a strike. So 0 1, I'm trying to go fastball up and in, play the fastball up and in off of that cutter away tunnel and get to 0 2. Now I missed down in a little bit and he was late on the fastball, which gave me a really crazy idea. Oh, that was a little bit down, but that's fine. Now I'm just going to throw a split. Got cutter away. No. 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 In the dirt, Trevor. Didn't get it in the dirt. F me, stupid pitch. And the reason I say that's a crazy idea is because I had a free strike out here if I just threw a slider away, but I was getting a little bit too cute at this point. I liked the two splits that I threw before, but I didn't at this point know what the movement on them was. And I was trying to throw this in the dirt and play off that down and in tunnel, but that's not something that I'm great at with the split yet. So I should have just gone to the slider. It's all right. It was actually a good pitch. I like the pitch, but this didn't get down enough. Alexi swung first pitch, so I'm just going to go heater away here. There we go. So missed with the first pitch and came back with a fastball middle middle on the 1-0 count, which is a dangerous pitch, but fortunately he was taking. So we're back to even now. Now we go with the change up. At least it was down. That's when I should have thrown last at bat. We're just going heater away here. Now do we throw the split again? He's late on the fastball, so I kind of think I should go cut her in here. So the reason I didn't throw another split here is twofold. One, it's a 2-2 two -two count. So if I do throw it in the dirt and he doesn't swing, I'm in 3-2. I don't really want to do that. Two, he was late on a fastball. So if I throw a pitch that's a little bit slower, he's going to be right on time with it. So if I do happen to miss in the zone, it's a recipe for disaster because he's going to be right on time with it. So I decided to go to something else. Or heater up again. Ah, doors! Read that right. That was a stupid pitch. Very stupid. I tried to I tried to get tricky. Yeah. Did you see my little wand that I got yeah, out there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Base it. You threw the cutter to try to set up the slider. I threw the fastball first pitch was down, mm -hmm. and I threw the cutter away. I was like, oh, I'll throw the split in the dirt off of the low fastball uh, okay. when I should have just thrown the yeah. slider because yeah, he couldn't touch my. Feet. I just I started getting tricky with it. I was like, oh, I'm going to get cute here and throw a split instead of just throwing the pitch that would have wiped him out. It's going to make electric social media content. Expelliarmus. <laughs> okay, so through three innings, we have seven strikeouts, and I haven't quite yet realized that something special is going to go on. Let's see how the fourth goes. So first hitter in the fourth is Reynaldo Rodriguez. Now, he hit the curveball very hard foul, and he wasn't very good on sliders. I can get fastballs up and in on him and sliders away, so I decided to start with the slider and try to finish with the fastball this at bat. Yeah, we'll go slider first pitch. I like that. Not quite. Here we go right back to it. Dot. Now we go with the heater in. So after the two sliders away in a 1-1 count, I decided to speed him up a little bit, get him swinging at the fastball up and in, and open up all the breaking stuff, or maybe another fastball in a 1-2 count, get him above the zone, because he's in swing mode. So need to execute this pitch and get to an advantage count. I need that to be a strike. Oh, I'll go down the way. Good swing, but... Oh, wow. That carried tonight. I messed that up with a 1-1 one, one heater. That's terrible. Yeah, not the best at bat. That 1-1 one, one heater needed to be a strike and I missed by too much. Then I decided to go with a fastball down the way where he could get his arms extended on it. And just, I read that at bat poorly. Starting off with a leadoff double in the fourth in a 0-0 game is not great, especially because I have the middle of the order up right now. So not my best at bat. Next up is Kyle Martin. Now remember the first at bat, I was three for five on fastballs up and in, hitting the exact same spot and I struck him out. So there's no reason to adjust now because I know that he can't get to that pitch very often. So I'm going to go right back to it. 
Just need an out here. So the OO pitch missed up and away a little bit, but I still get the swing. He really struggles with top shelf, so I'm gonna go right back there and just make sure and get this one in. Now the guy on second base and nobody out, I don't wanna let him steal third base because then a pop fly might score him. So I decided to go with the slide step here. Slide step fastball up and in. And I missed my spot, threw him a ball in the bottom third of the zone and he did not miss it. That's a single for him and a run scored. And now I'm actually behind in this game, one nothing. Not good. I need to get some outs here. Finally gave him one down where he could get to it. Kevin! Marlon's not a runner, so don't gotta worry about that. So we have Gabrielino at the plate. In the first bat, I got him on sliders and cutters and he chased and gave me a sword. So I'm gonna try to do that again. Start him off with the first pitch cutter away. Dot. Slider. Yep. Another one. Chaser! Cutter, slider, slider, three pitch strikeout. Got him to chase out of the zone again. So I've got a really good read on what he's doing. And that brings us to eight Ks on the night. So he swung first pitch on a heater up and in or late. Doors. Now we go up and in with that. So the reason I thought to go up and in here is because Ramos is basically a clone of Martin with maybe a little bit less power. This is the exact same sequence I threw to Martin. Fastball up and away, swing and miss. Now I tried to go fastball up and in. So I got to make sure and get this one up. I don't want to leave it down in the zone and repeat the mistake that I just made. Off my plate. So I missed off the plate inside a little bit with the 0-1 pitch, but in 1-1 count, I made sure to hit the plate and I got this at the top of the zone and got exactly what I wanted, which was a swing and a foul ball. So now I have a great tunnel set up to either go slightly above that with a fastball or break a curveball down in the dirt. Well, that's okay, because we're going curveball down. See ya, window shopper. Go back to the dugout. Have a nice seat. Put now, I didn't get that curveball down where I wanted it to, but it still had a lot of protection. I talk about this often. If you throw fastballs up at the zone and they have a certain trajectory, then you throw a curveball that looks like it's a fastball above that, they take it and it breaks down into the zone. Or you throw the curveball that looks like the fastball that breaks below the zone. So there's very little chance that this curveball in this sequence gets hit. In this case, I got the freeze effect and I got my ninth strikeout and he turned into a window shopper. He's just looking. So next up is Arania and I decided to throw a first pitch cutter. Right on it. And he did not look comfortable on that swing at all. So I decided to go back to the slider, drop the speed a little bit, throw a little bit bigger movement. And I'm just gonna wear him out with this. The rest will be a bat. Nice frame job. Just going right back to it though. But I missed with the 0-1 slider and now I'm 1-1. Now my idea was just to wear him out with sliders, but Brasenio called fastball away and that actually sounded like a good pitch here. Throwing the cutter away strike, throwing the slider away for a ball, he didn't swing at that one. If I throw the fastball away, it anchors him to that location. So he's gonna see cutter that starts out there that ends up as a strike. Now fastball that starts a little off the plate that comes back that ends up as a strike. When I throw the next pitch out of that tunnel and sweep it away from him, he's gonna have to swing at it. Okay, definitely looking slow and now... <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm talking about. That fastball anchors him to swing at that outside tunnel, and I throw the slider right out of that same tunnel, break it below the zone, and get a swing, and he's nowhere close to it. Perfectly executed sequence there. The guy that scored, he like looked at you and said something. Uh, I was gonna tell him good swing on second, but he wasn't looking at me. Strikeouts. Yeah, I'm at 10. 10 through four. We're gonna break some records tonight. So yeah, at this point, I was like, I recognize this game. I'm at 10 strikeouts through four innings. That's the exact same number of strikeouts I was at in my second outing when I struck out 14 hitters in six innings and got pulled out of a no hitter. Now that game, I had a pitch count. This game, I do not have a pitch count. So I was pretty sure after the fourth that we we're gonna break some records. I can't watch Ponce punts out 11 <laughs> through five and not come with my <laughs> Get us a couple here, give me a lead. Sit, 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 sit. There we go. F yeah. F yeah, Steffi. Now, the top of the fifth inning was a very long inning, and I decided to go down to the bullpen and play some catch in between because I was getting cold. 
This is not something that happens very often, but it's something I did a lot in college. Basically every college start, I would go to the bullpen in between innings and play catch and throw some off the mound. I haven't done it much in pro ball because most of the pro bullpens are in the outfield, so there's not a really good spot to do it. In Japan, a lot of the starting pitchers will actually go out onto the field with two outs right in front of the dugout and play catch. That's a very common thing, but I didn't do it much there. I might start doing it again though because this actually helped me feel pretty good when I got back out to the mound. I felt more loose than I usually do. Makes sense. So we put up four runs to give me a 4-1 lead. That's a very nice cushion and now I can just focus in on attacking the zone. Definitely the right decision to go to the pen now. You need to be aggressive in the zone. Come on. Long inning, you gotta be taking. Go. So after the first pitch fastball wave for a strike, I decided to go back to my split. Again, I've been throwing it more in this game because I had a pretty good feel for it, but I also need to throw something else to the lefties so I can turn the lineup over multiple times. And that split was perfect because it was a little bit above the fastball and it broke away from him and it still ended up as a strike. So now I have a little bit of a low tunnel strike, a little bit of a higher tunnel strike, both of those moving away from the hitter. I'm gonna use that same tunnel and try to bounce a curveball out of it and see if I get a swing in the dirt. Curveball. Chaser! Beautiful sequence. And if you overlay the split and the curveball, you can see how much they look alike and why I got that swing on that curveball. Just a really well executed three pitch sequence. Cutter away, fastball in, slider strikeout. So next up is Flores, and that's the sequence that I was thinking about doing to him. Cut her away, strike, fastball in, and then sweep the slider off the plate. Let's see if I can execute it. So I missed pretty badly on the OO cutter. I did go out of the slide step, so I have a timing disruption mixed in there, but that should have been a strike. So in my head here, I'm just ignoring that that first pitch happened, and I'm just going to go right back to my game plan. Cut her away, first pitch. Chaser. And when he swung at that cutter, I was like, man, that wasn't really that close to the zone. Maybe he's buying into that away tunnel. Should I even throw anything else or just keep throwing that pitch and he's probably gonna swing at it. Do I throw anything besides that? Take. Ultimately, I decided to go to the slower version of the cutter that moves more, which is my sweeper. Now I missed my location a little bit here, but this pitch probably started at him and it ended up on the inner third. So it's a nice little freeze pitch. Doesn't do much for me with a tunnel, but I am one two, which gives me the advantage. Started front hip, chase slider. And after that one two take away, you can see his body is moving over the plate. He's on his toes. He's kind of falling across the plate after he took this pitch, which means to me that he's looking for something that's moving away from him and he's also slowed down. He's looking for something slower in speed. Okay, now you take the fastball. I was trying to throw this fastball down and away to get the freeze, but I missed at the top of the zone a little bit. But you can see how late he is on this pitch. Now, coming off of that, I have a high fastball tunnel set up, so I figured if I throw a slider that starts middle, breaks off the plate, there's no way he's gonna be able to take that. Now you'll swing the slider. Ah, doors! That's not doors. What am I saying? That was a wind farmer. And that's exactly what happens. I throw that slider that looks like the fastball up, it breaks down out of the zone, and I get my swing. I was definitely a little bit out of it here, probably because I was focused so much downrange on the hitter, but I yelled doors on an off-speed pitch. Kids, don't do that. That's not it. Doors is when you blow a fastball by someone, you blow their doors off. Like, sliders are not doors. So that's my 12th K, and with two outs in the fifth, we're back to the top of the order and Jonathan Daza for the third time. This is where I'm gonna start having to change my approach or they're gonna catch on to me. Is this the number one guy? Yeah. So this time, instead of starting off with the cutter first pitch, I started off with the bigger one and the slower one, the slider. I threw it in the middle. He got a decent swing off on it, but I am 0-1. Slider, slider, or do I go fastball in then slider? Yep. So the 0-1 fastball up and in was perfectly executed and I could not dream of a better result. He swung at it, which means he bought into the tunnel. He was super late on it, which means he's gonna have to try to speed up to get to that pitch. And it's a foul ball and I'm 0-2, nothing better. Now we go with the chase slider. Okay. 
So that slider was too far off the plate to really share the fastball tunnel, but I did get a read on what he was looking for here. Notice he has a little double step with his front foot and he's on his toes and kind of leans out over the plate. That to me indicates that he's looking for something slow. Heater down away or slider again? No, we'll go slider again. And you can see on the one-two pitch that the same thing happens. He's on his toes, he kind of shuffles his feet a little bit, he's falling out over the plate, and he doesn't budge at this pitch. But after two sliders away like this, where he really drank in that tunnel and he was looking away, I know I can throw a fastball out of that tunnel and get him. Now I'll hit her down the way. Ah, doors! And that's exactly what happened. I didn't quite get it down in the way, but it was out of third, and after slowing down looking for those two sliders, he was nowhere close to the fastball, and I get my 13th strikeout. And nice swings on the first two. Good battle. So walking up the field, he was kind of looking at me, and I was looking at him, but I wanted to give him props. Like, he's got two hits off me, a double and a single on the split. So I finally got him here, but he's been putting up good at-bats, taking good pitches, taking good swings on pitches. He's a really good hitter, so I wanted to give him his props there. It better not f***ing rain. It better not f***ing rain. You want to keep it going? What was he saying? Oh, he was just saying good battle. I was like, yeah, he got me on the first two. Good job. All good. Yeah. I got nervous energy right now. The, the rain? No. Because of what's at stake here. Has anyone seen a radar? Is this supposed to rain again or no? Hopefully it just opens up right now. No. Absolutely not. We can't have that. Why? Not with, no. If it opens up and no. they cancel the game, it's no. not going to be a game. I, I have 13 strikeouts through five. The league record's 18. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I and the, know that. the franchise record is 14. Okay, I didn't know that. So, I've punched out the last, I think, 11 outs. At least the last nine. I've punched aside the last three innings. And I don't know about the, I think the second I struck out the last two, or at least the last one. So we need to, I got, I'm at 13 right now. We need it to not rain. Okay. Yeah, please do your rain dance or whatever to keep this rain away. We do not need this. Thank you. I think you're probably going to have to pitch through this inning and hit it. I'm fine pitching through it as long as I don't delay it. Yeah. So yeah, at this point in the game, 13 strikeouts through five, I started getting stomach butterflies. I honestly had like nervous energy. My stomach was like, uh, I had this like adrenaline rush. I could feel it. Like it's a great feeling. It's a similar feeling I had in 2020 with the Reds when I faced the Brewers for my last regular season start, knowing that it was on short rest. And if we won the game, we went to the playoffs and I was going to win the Cy Young and the same energy I had against the Braves that year in the first game of the playoffs. So like, I haven't had this feeling that often, but I love it. Like it's just, ah, uh, it just gets me going. A lot of people freak out about it. Like, oh, I feel nervous, but I just embrace it. Cause I know that's gonna give me some adrenaline and I'm gonna perform better once I get out onto the field. So uh, I love this feeling and I was really happy to have it, but we gotta keep this rain away. Like, please God, do not take this opportunity away from me. That's what was going through my head. The top of the sixth inning was another long one. There's a couple pitching changes and I had to go back down to the bullpen again to stay loose. But again, this was helping me this game. I kind of rediscovered something that I used to do that I really like. So first hitter of the sixth inning is Alexi Amarista. Now he's a really good hitter. So we've had good battles all year long. And here I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do to change up my approach to get him out. Aggressive in the zone. You've not seen curveball tonight. So we'll get you a curveballs. I missed pretty badly with the OO pitch, and as you can see, it's starting to rain here. So I'm really hoping that this clears out and it doesn't get worse. So 1 0, I executed a good fastball up and away, and he kind of pulled off of that a little bit. So I know I have that outer third open to me. Now we go cut her in. That was a bad pitch. We just go challenge Heater away here. Late. So 2 1, I throw the same exact fastball and he fouls it off. He again pulled off it a little bit, so I could have gone right back to that. I want the curveball here. Ball's a little slick. Didn't have a good grip. Okay. Oh. Instead, I decided to go to the curveball, figuring I'd use the two fastballs away as the tunnel and break the curveball in the dirt, but I didn't get it in the dirt. It was in the bottom third of the zone, and he actually put a really good swing on this and hit the ball pretty hard. Now, my first baseman made a diving attempt at it, hit off his glove, but this one's on me. And to lead off the inning in the six, like, not the way I wanted to start it. 5-1 game. We gotta get fastballs in on this guy. 
Yeah, first pitch slider, clearly a strike. Um, you can't get much more strikey than that. I got that being a strike, but we'll go back to it. Chaser. Fortunately, it balanced out for me. He chased a ball in a 1-0 count, so now we're back to 1-1. This is a crucial pitch. We got to get to 1-2 here. I think we got to go heater in here. Ah, okay, second time I've tried to go fastball into him and missed way up, and that's not a usable pitch, so I'm not executing really well to him right now. Okay, last one we went heater down away and he smoked it. So yeah, that's me remembering his first at bat where I had the same exact count and the same sequence of a fastball way above the zone and then a fastball in the zone. So I decided to go to the slider again because I know he struggles with it. I just want to make sure and hit the zone for a strike. Now that slider was at the top of the zone and he got a really good swing on it. His arms were fully extended. Fortunately for me, he missed a little bit, but that could have been damage. Had your chance. Now we're throwing an aggressive slider in the zone. Now the reason I say aggressive slider in the zone is because we're in a 2-2 count here. So I want to make sure and try to hit the bottom corner of the zone, but I'm not trying to get chased. I want to make sure that this is going to force action, that he's going to have to swing at this, and just try to beat him with my stuff. That's my mindset. Ah! And that's exactly what I did. I threw a really good slider, and he fouled it off, and we get to the next pitch. Perfectly executed. Now in the 2-2 count, I decided to repeat the fastball up and in, knowing that he wasn't going to be on time with it, and I was hoping I could get this ball by him. Ah! Two ball. And I was right, he wasn't close to it. He grounded into a double play or what could have been a double play, but he got down the line very quickly. So my guys did a good job trying to turn this, but just wasn't meant to be. He didn't hit it quite hard enough. I wanted that two ball so I could go on the windup. Now we're back to Kyle Martin for the third time. First at bat, I threw him five straight fastballs and struck him out. Second at bat, I threw him two more fastballs, one of them in the bottom third of the zone, and he got a hit to score the run. So I know I can go back to that fastball up and in, but I might want to use some off-speed stuff this at bat, depending on where he is and how he adjusts. Yep. So I decided to throw the first pitch curveball, and I got the call at the top of the zone, and now I have a great tunnel set up. Curveball up here that ends up as a strike, so anything that starts below that, he's going to read as potential curveball for a strike in a more hittable location, but I can get him to swing at those fastballs up above the zone now. So that curveball set up this hole at bat. Beautiful. Now we go heater in, curveball in the dirt. And there's that fastball up and in, by him that he just can't get to. And now we're 0-2. We have a lot of options here. You can repeat the fastball up and in. You can throw the fastball above the zone that he might have to swing at because of the first pitch curveball. Or he can bounce his curveball in the dirt, playing off that fastball tunnel. So many different options. I think we got to go back there or go with the curveball down because he'll swing. Whatever Bresenio calls. So with all those options in mind, I decided I was just going to trust my catcher Bresenio. Whatever he called, I was going to go with. And he called fastball. So I tried to get that fastball up and in, but a little bit above the zone. Unfortunately, I just let it go early and I missed really high on arm side and it wasn't close enough to even get a swing. So now we're one, two, and I decided to take my shot at the curveball in the dirt. Now I'll take my shot. Ah, yes! And I got exactly what I wanted, a strikeout to take me to 14 on the night, tying my own Diablos record for most strikeouts in a game by a Diablos pitcher. And if you look at the 0-1 fastball and that 1-2 curveball overlay, you can see how devastating of a combo this really is. So that brings up Lino, and I have a chance here to set an all-time franchise record. I'm going to take it. Got. So that's a first pitch slider for a strike. It started off the plate inside and broke back to the inner third, so I get the freeze. Probably a hittable pitch if you can trigger on it, but... Oh, oh, I'm willing to play those chances. Now, early in the game, I started him off with cutters, which is a mid-speed pitch. Here, I'm flipping my approach. I'm starting him off with the slow sliders to see where he's at, knowing I can finish with the fastball or even the slow slider again if he's not on it. Ah, doors. So the plan 0-1 here was to go fastball away and set that anchor on the outer part of the plate so I could sweep a slider off the plate 0-2 and get a swing. Now I missed my location a little bit, it ran up and in, so I'm reading that he was late on a fastball and I can go back to that or maybe bounce a curveball here. For the lead record. Out for the franchise record. Ah! All right. We're good. Now I decided to go with the slider, but I probably should have gone with the curveball. I didn't execute the slider great, but I had a better tunnel set up for the curveball anyway if I just would have bounced it. 
I don't get my strikeout to set the league record, but we're 14 Ks through six innings and I'm still in a good spot pitch count wise. I know I'm gonna break it next inning. That's what I'm thinking. We got 14 there. Two up on that. That's gotta be down. Yeah. It's too, too hittable. It's on the black. It's too, it's too hittable, yeah. It's a little wet, but mound's holding up okay. I wasn't slipping. It'd be nice if we could get some like dry stuff put out there. The loose dirt around where I'm walking on the mound is like clumping on my cleats a little bit, but the landing's still fine. I need at least two this next inning. Got to find five of the next three. I'm not coming out of the game. So <laughs> I got three innings to find five Ks. Should be doable. I still haven't thrown a ball hard yet. What's my what's my top velo so far? 97. I'm starting to heat up. 97 last inning. There we go. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm still cruising. I have like the nervous adrenaline rush right now. Uh, okay. I got like stomach butterflies and my stomach's like not feeling great. It's just like the nerves, yeah. Okay. So, a little spike? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get through next inning yeah. cruising and then we'll see about the eighth and ninth if I... But on how long this freaking inning's gonna be. Yeah, I could use a quick one here. Yeah. So going out for the seventh, I knew that I hadn't really thrown a ball hard, but I didn't want to change the rhythm that I was in. I know I have more if I need it, but I haven't needed it yet. So I want to keep executing quality pitches. So first up is Ramos, and I start him off with a cutter inside. Perfect. Now we'll go to the heater up and in. So after the 0-1 fastball up and away for a ball, I decided to go right back to that fastball up and in. That's where I was trying to go on the pitch before, but I missed my spot. Go back to that. Doors. And we get what we anticipated, which was a swing to move this to one, two. Now I can throw that curveball in the dirt like I did to Martin, or I can go back above the zone with a fastball. Now we'll go curveball. Same sequence to Martin. Ah. Yes! Ah! For the 15th! I threw the same exact sequence that I threw to Martin with the same result, a strikeout, and for the franchise record, we get a sword. No better way to do it. That's for you, Mr. Harp. Both of your franchises and your hometown. That one's for you, Mr. Harp. So Mr. Harp is the owner of the Diablos Rojos, but he also owns Oaxaca. His two franchises are playing against him and his hometown is in Oaxaca. Him and his family were out at the game. He specifically requested that I pitch in this series so his family and his friends could come out and watch the game. This was a special night for him, I'm sure. And I was hoping to make it even more special by setting all time record. We need to find four more Ks. Now let's get the league record. We gotta get four more to break the league record. So next up is Urania, and I start him off with the first pitch cutter. Ah. Saves pitch count. Great. Now we need a strikeout. So with two outs in the seventh, I'm at 91 pitches, and I'm at 15 Ks. I really want this strikeout, because if I get this one, I'll be at 16, and I'll only need three strikeouts over the last two innings. No, 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 come on. Now I missed with the first pitch curveball and I just tried to throw this fastball down on the way to get back in the count and I missed with that too. Trying to get a strikeout, starting off 2-0 is not what you want to do. Challenge here. Now that's the definition of a challenge heater. 2-0, he's looking fastball. I throw the fastball right in the middle. I get a foul ball, so I win that one. Now I need to throw another strike and get to 2-2 here. I don't want to waste too many pitches. Cut her in. So after getting the foul ball on the middle fastball 2-0 and getting the swing through on the fastball 2-1, I now have a great tunnel set up for the curveball. I've worked him middle of the zone up. I've set the tunnel. I've also sped him up a little bit. He's been late on those fastballs, so he's probably speeding up to try to hit the fastball. And I'm going to try to use that high fastball tunnel and get that swing on the curveball in the dirt. Ah! Ah! Two innings to get three. Now, I missed my spot a little bit, but we get fortunate. He takes it, and I get my 16th strikeout. I have six more outs to strike out three hitters. This should be doable. The only problem is I'm close to 100 pitches through seven innings here. I have two innings to get three more and I'm not coming out of this game. You can't convince me otherwise. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you very often, 
But tonight I'm telling you I'm staying in this game. All right, what's your, uh, what's your, what's your reasoning? Huh? What? What's your reasoning? My energy is great. I have like the nervous adrenaline energy right now, and I'm going to break this league record. So don't take me out of the game until I do. All right, what's our limit? Huh? What's our limit? 146 is my all-time high, and right. I'm perfectly fine to throw that. How about 110? I'm not coming out of this game, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you got to give me this, Lil. At least until I break it. I need 19. I have two innings to get three punches. I'm going to do it tonight. I feel great. I'm pitching every seventh day. Let's go. Just sit Let's back and enjoy the show, Lil. Thank you. When I punch out the third, I got to get three more for a league record. 19. Eight. This is the team record. Okay. This is the team record strikeout. Can you deliver this to Mr. Harp? If he wants me to sign, I don't know, but give it to Mr. Harp and then we can. You wanted to write the like record. Just... I just want him to put it in the museum if he wants, or I want him to have it. Oh, okay. He's here. Who who can give it to him? He's going, he's going to his home tomorrow. He's here tonight. Yeah. Well, either way, I just want to give it to someone who can give it to Mr. Harp. That's a tiny record. Of the... That's That broke the record with that one. 15th, yeah. I'm going to keep the one that breaks the league record. So I got two innings to get three. This inning? No. Two innings to get three. If I get to, if I get the first two guys, I'll go for it for sure, but I'm not getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Got to punch out three of the next six. That's a key point for all the young pitchers out there. When you're in the middle of a really good game, you're in flow state. Like, you're locked in. If you start getting distracted and saying, oh, well, I need to get strikeouts, or, oh, I can't give up a hit because I have a no-hitter, or, oh, I can't walk someone because I got a perfect game. If you start thinking about those things, it's going to take you out of your rhythm, and that's not what you want. So here, I'm just telling Ronnie that I'm going to keep focusing on what I've been doing, my process. Not the result, the process. Throw strike one, throw strike two. When you get to two strikes, get the punch out. <laughs> So first pitch cutter for a strike, followed by a fastball at the bottom of the zone for a strike. We are 0-2, and now it's time to chase the strikeout. Let's throw the slider and get him to chase. Now we go slider. Nowhere close. Yeah, that was a waste pitch. Just missed my spot. Let's do it again. Yeah, another waste pitch. Although, look at his body language. He does trigger on this. He's slowed down, he's falling across the plate, he's on his toes, and he started to swing a little bit. Now, it wasn't close enough for him to go, but what's he looking for here? I was a little confused by that. Ah, uh, it's just too far. It's okay. Beat him with the heater. Ah! Mother okay, we've taken an 0-2 count, we turned it into a 3-2 count. That was a free strikeout if I just get the fastball in the zone down and away, but I didn't, I missed. And now I'm in danger of walking the leadoff hitter, and I've wasted a lot of pitches, which is not good for my pitch count and not good for this inning. Ah! Ah! Oh boy, leadoff walk. Wasted a bunch of pitches. Look at this bat flip, by the way, on the walk. That's like a whirly bird. I mean, that's an aggressive bat flip for a walk when your team struck out 16 times through seven innings. That's it's impressive. Okay. Strike one. So because we're up 6-1, I'm not really concerned about the runner on first stealing because he doesn't really mean much in terms of winning the game. So I decided to go with my high leg kick here. Get in the zone. All right, something's a little bit off here. I'm missing by way too much. I need to refocus and get myself back in the zone. This is the fourth time through the order, so I need to make sure that I'm executing quality pitches. I'm at much more risk here of getting hit because they've seen me so much. So I need to get back to the basics. Throw strike one. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Same more in line, throw that to the middle, the puzzle away away. Yep, fastball away here. Yep. 
Now, that was a really well-timed mound visit by Brasenia right there. Clearly, I've been spraying balls everywhere, and I've missed by a lot on a lot of fastballs. I pulled the fastball down away. I missed really high with the fastball to walk the leadoff hitter. I missed really high with the fastball first pitch of this at bat. So, very quality mound visit right there. Good game awareness. Challenge heater for a double play. Ah. Doors, same thing. Motherfucker. So after throwing a 2-0 strike, I missed terribly on the 2-1 pitch, and now we're in a big jam. If I walk this guy, there's a good chance that my manager is going to come pull me out of this game. Someone was warming up in the bullpen at this point, and I did not want that. So this pitch is super important. Just get the ball in the zone. Let's go. And I executed a really good pitch. I get a swing through and we're in 3-2, but the job is not done. I need to get this out or I might be coming out of this game so close to the record and not get a chance to finish it. And I did not want that. So here we go, 3-2 fastball. Ah. Foul ball, and he was pretty late on that. Do it again. Beat him with the fastball. And he was pretty late on that one too. Let's take a chance at a freeze down in the zone. Get this one down. Okay, it was down, but it leaked in. Gotta go right back to it. I'm not taking a chance of walking him, and he's been late on all these fastballs. Stick with the heater. Middle, middle fastball, and he was a little bit closer. This ball went right down the line, but about 20 feet foul. To me, that's telling me, okay, timing-wise, he's very close because he almost hit that ball fair. Now I have a lot of protection built in for the slowest speed pitch that I have. I'm going to flip from the highest end, fastball, to the lowest end with the sweeper. I just need to throw this in the zone. I don't want to get a chase here. I got to beat him in the zone with this pitch, the movement and the speed. Get this ball in the zone. That's what's going through my head. Now it's a slider. Okay, sigh of relief right there. Not only did we get one of the strikeouts that we were chasing, I'm at 17 now, but we didn't walk him. Now my manager doesn't have a reason to come take me out, other than the fact that I did waste about 10 or 12 pitches in that at bat, so my pitch count is really climbing. We need a quick one here. But Amarista is not an easy out, so this is not gonna be easy. Get ahead. Ah. After he was late on the first pitch fastball up, I decided to go fastball away because earlier in the game, he wasn't handling fastball away very well. So I knew I could get him on that. Again. Ah. Okay, now we're 0-2. Time to use those tunnels and break off a nasty curveball. Curveball. And I'm thinking just get this ball in the dirt. Do not give him a chance of putting this in play. Ah. Yeah! Yeah! Perfectly executed pitch, perfect result. We are now tied with a league record with 18. I could break it on this hitter. And I bet that's what my manager was hoping for because I've thrown about 115 pitches now and he's probably desperate to take me out of the game. And honestly, breaking it this inning would probably be the best case scenario because I've already thrown about 115 pitches. So my pitch count is getting a little high. Come on. For history, baby. You and me. Next up is Ronaldo Rodriguez, someone I know I could strike out. This could be the history-making strikeout right here. Okay, he's late on the first pitch heater away. Let's move this and go fastball in. Again. Ugh. All right, for the third time tonight, I've tried to go heater in to Rodriguez, and I've missed up above the zone. Now, the first time I did this, I threw fastball away and he got a hit. Next time I did this, I threw a slider and he fouled it off. So I decided to go back to the slider. Ah. Nice play. Let's go. And this time he was closer to it. But fortunately for me, he hit it right at my third baseman who made a great play and I'm out of the inning. One strikeout for league history. I'm at 18. 18. I got one more. 19. Hey, is it, is it 19 or 18? I'm at 18 strikeouts right now. So I need to tie. I need one to tie, two to win. To tie. So it's 18. I'm tied. Yeah, so I need one more to set it. Okay, that's what I thought. You got it. 
You got it. I know. You know what? The most important thing is what you told the skipper about you pitching one day a week. That's my point with you. And the way you carry the velocity, fucking heater is better now. Yeah. Okay? These guys. Can't believe I fucking walked the first guy. God damn it. Quick inning is good here. Just get me back out there. That was a good battle with the righty. What was that, like the 12th pitch, 10th pitch? Slider in zone, pretty much dotted. First pitch, get ahead. The only problem with where we are in this game right now is that I'm at 119 pitches. I don't care about this because I felt good and I could throw 140 or 50 or whatever, it doesn't matter, but I know my coaches were a little bit concerned about it. Going out here, we're facing Kyle Martin, first batter of the ninth inning. Let's just get this strike out and end it and that way my coaches can be happy and I can be happy. So right back to the fastball up and in, 0-0. We get a foul ball, 0-1, great start. He was pretty close to it. And coming perfectly off that fastball in tunnel was this 0-1 cutter and we get a long foul ball. He hit this ball pretty good but because it started chasing him and ran in off the plate, he pulled it way foul. Exactly what I want out of that pitch. Now we have two pitches coming out of that tunnel, the fastball up and the cutter that looks just like it that breaks in. So we have some confusion set up. If I can hit that same tunnel with a curveball right here, I'm gonna get my strike out. For all the glory, baby. For all the glory in the dirt. Ah, ah. Give it to me. <sighs> How did he not swing at that, honestly? Like I hit my tunnel perfectly. That curveball lines up perfectly with the cutter and the fastball. I'm shocked he didn't swing at that pitch. But he can't take all of those. He's gonna swing at one of them. I'm going right back to that same exact pitch. Get it in the dirt. Just a weak pop-up. Okay, I say weak pop-up right there, but when he hit that, I was pretty sure that was a homer. Um, we're playing in Oaxaca where the ball absolutely flies and he has a lot of power. There we go. That ball like got past the fence and then just like came straight down. You can see my outfielder running directly across the fence right here. I thought for sure that was a homer, but thank God it stayed in. Ah! <laughs> I almost got what I wanted and you almost got what you wanted. <laughs> this is my guy. This is my guy. Okay, we have two outs to find one strikeout. I cannot let this inning get away from me without breaking this record. Lee knows the guy. Ah! First pitch fastball, painted down and away at 96, 01. Sliders. Now remembering his prior at bats, he hasn't been close to sliders all night, so that's what I chose to go with here, 01. And again, he wasn't anywhere close to it, so let's go right back to it. It doesn't have to be a better pitch. It just has to be the same pitch because he was nowhere close to it. Ah! Ah! Yeah! And there it is, my 19th K, an all-time league record, and honestly, my favorite game that I've ever pitched in because I love my strikeouts. And to hold an all-time strikeout record in any league anywhere is just, uh, I love it. That's like the best thing for me. Nice shot right there. Well, well, yeah, well. Great work, dog. Great work. Excellent. Nice fucking job, baby. Good job, dog. I'll stand up. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Cool. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Now coming out the field, all the opposing fans gave me a standing ovation. So I was thanking all of them and showing appreciation. There's also a lot of Diablos fans that were in the building that traveled to see us play. So here I'm giving them the horns representing the Diablos, acknowledging them in the stands. The fans made this an incredible game. So I wanted to thank everyone that was out. Hellboy, baby! Hellboy! Hi. Hi. Congrats, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, baby. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you. Outstanding, my friend. Thank you. Oh, bro. It's John. Yes. 
Congrats, bro. Thank you. Good job, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, boy. Thank you. Oh, dude. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. 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 Couldn't let me go for 20? Are you kidding me? I don't know. Hell of a guy. Congratulations, big guy. Thank you. Thank you. you because you're the best. You Thank okay? You. Excellent effort. Appreciate Good it. Job. Good job. Right, now this is open, but you still have one more out to go. Right. I don't know why you didn't let me get it for the even 20. I was yelling like... I know, one out from a complete game. Yeah, are you kidding? Exactly. What are we doing? Pitch count does not matter at this point. I almost got it on a sword on Martin. I was so close. Yeah, that was real close enough. I think I'm going to need a... Definitely going to need a new hat. Do I retire my glove? I do have a Jigglypuff glove coming. I told you early in the season I was going to get it. And I got it. <laughs> so my night was done at 19Ks, but there was another record on the line. No team has ever struck out 20 in a game, and we have one hitter to make that happen. So we brought in Jimmy Yacobonis. Let's see if he can get it done. Uh, and volume. Yeah! 20 for the game? Let's go. So that's the game. A new Diablos record, 19 strikeouts nice in the game. A new league record, 19 strikeouts in the game. And a new league record for the team with 20 Great strikeouts job. in the Great game. Job. What an incredible job. night. Great fucking job, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to help me on my goal of getting a million subs by the end of 2024. And you can watch this video right here for another game breakdown.